Hello, it's Christian here and welcome to a slightly different video. We just finished the basic shmup tutorial on this channel. We created a tiny little shmup and that's fine and good. But if you've been playing close attention, you might have noticed that the game we ended up with is nothing like the one I teased you with at the beginning. I've shown you footage of a much more elaborate advanced shmup. So what happened to that game? Well, this is what we are going for now. We are about to start phase two of the shmup tutorial where we learn how to make a more advanced shmup. While the first phase was more about teaching you the basics of programming, how to get anything working at all, the second phase will be more focused on the design of things. Because in most cases, this is going to be the thing that makes the difference. And the first step of any design process is usually the research phase. In order to make a great shmup, we need to learn about shmups. We need to get a deep understanding on how those games work and how the people playing them think. This means we need to do two things now. First, we need to deliberately play a bunch of shmups. Second, we also need to get in touch with the shmup community. And in order to help you with those things, I've prepared a list of interesting shmups to try out. But more importantly, I have also invited a few prominent shmup content creators to share their recommendations. Visiting channels that focus on shmups is a fantastic gateway into the community, so I encourage you to seek out and follow any of our guests today. And of course, I encourage you to try the shmups. So without any further ado, blast off! So in order to make sense of all those shmups, it's useful to establish some categories. One such category are the so-called classic shmups or old school shmups. Now you might think that these are the very very old games like Space Invaders or Galaga, but when shmup players talk about classic shmups, what they mean are games that came out a little bit later. It wasn't until like the second half of the 80s where developers finally figured out the shmup formula and kind of like the game's formula in general. We got graphically impressive levels with scrolling backgrounds, fast bullets, epic boss fights, these are the classic shmups and you probably know some of them already. I'm gonna set the tone on this video by cheating off the bat. The first recommendation is a double recommendation for R-Type and Gradius. Both of these are household shmup names, both of them are iconic shmup franchises that have prevailed up to this day. You've probably heard of them, but if you've never played them, you absolutely should now. R-Type is a side-scrolling shmup where you fly through claustrophobic caves, fighting creepy biomechanical enemies reminiscent of the Alien movies. R-Type's signature gameplay evolves around a complex satellite pod which can hover in front of you or can be docked to the ship at different points to be used as a shield. Gradius, on the other hand, came out a bit earlier than R-Type, so it is a bit more of a trailblazer. But I think it's also a bit more bland as a result. It's a ship flying through space, shooting at other spaceships. Sometimes there are more I and I, I, I'm, I really don't understand why, but okay. Whatever the reason may be, the signature Gradius mechanic is where it's at. It revolves around spending collected power-ups to purchase upgrades from an ever-present menu at the bottom of the screen. It's kind of like a little shmup RPG and that came out in 1985. That's crazy. And that's one of the things I want you to pay attention to. Classic shmups often experimented with elaborate weapons and upgrade systems. Your ship could be upgraded or reconfigured to suit different encounters. These systems often added strategic depth, but they also offered a promise of a breakthrough progress. Even if you were struggling with the game's difficulty, you always had the hope that the next pickup or the next upgrade could turn the tables in your favor. R-Type and Gradius both started as arcade games, but they have been ported to a bazillion systems and had numerous re-releases, so it should be easy to play those games even if you don't want to mess with emulation. For R-Type I would specifically recommend R-Type Dimensions. It's a remake of the first two games and it has that thing where you can switch between old and new graphics by pressing a button. I love when remakes do that. And of course there's also the incredible Pico 8 port of R-Type. Shout out to the Robo Z. R-Type and Gradius started on the arcades 
but gained mainstream appeal through their many console ports. But one legendary shmup series that remained firmly rooted in its arcade origins is Raiden. No, 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 not you. Different Raiden. Raiden is such an iconic shmup that some people apparently use Raiden style as a synonym for classic shmups. Alright, well on its face there is nothing special here. It's a vertical shmup featuring a cool red jet that shoots at a whole army of other cool airplanes and spaceships. But also that's kind of the appeal here. It's a platonic ideal of a shmup, no frills or funny business, just giving it to you straight. And it's polished in a way that set new standards. The backgrounds are lovely and detailed, often showing little narrative vignettes. The explosions are big and crunchy. The boss enemies are intricate and creative in a way that makes you want to get to the next stage just to discover what else the game has to offer. Playing this as a kid, Raiden completely blew me away. It set the bar when it came out and still has plenty to teach. Raiden has been re-released many times on new consoles. It also has uh, some modern sequels, but they tend to be a bit hit and miss. If you ask me, play it safe for now and stick to the first two games of the series. Now, when talking about a good, approachable shmup to get into the genre, there is one classic shmup that gets mentioned over and over again, and our first guest is eager to talk about it. Take it away. Hello, this is Game Boy Guru from Shoot the Corecast. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a game that I think makes a great starter shoot 'em up Blazing Lasers for the TurboGrafx-16. This awesome game was among the early launch titles for the system and still receives a lot of praise for its design and execution. Blazing Lasers was a joint venture between Hudson Soft and Compile, and you can see both developers' DNA all over the game. It has the caravan sensibilities of a Hudson shooter, and many of the weapon system ideas that Compile were known for, some of which would manifest in later shooting games they would make. Blazing Lasers is approachable, because as you power up your ship, you don't have one-hit instant deaths. It makes the game more forgiving for players learning the genre, because rather than having to start over, it gives you the opportunity to keep playing, and hopefully regain your power level as you continually learn the flow of the game. It's also more forgiving with the number of lives and bombs you can earn, and how easily you can power your ship back up after a death. In addition, while the game normally has a checkpoint system, you can circumvent that by engaging in one of the game's systems with power-up icons and earn special lives that will allow you to instantly respawn, making progression feel less insurmountable than many more difficult games. Its difficulty curve is also quite natural, so that by the time you reach the later stages, you should have learned the game well enough to be much better equipped to take on the more challenging enemy waves and obstacles. If you'd like to learn more about what makes this game great and a beginner-friendly title, check out episode 15 of Shoot the Corecast. We go in-depth to talk about the game, its systems, and why we think it's a pretty special shmup. If you want to get good info on what makes a shooting game great, check out more of our podcast or excellent YouTube channels like The Electric Underground, Shmup Junkie, Studio Mudprints, and Shmuptopia, among others. Also, please listen to Shoot the Corecast on your favorite podcasting service and let us know how we're doing. We'd love the feedback. Thank you so much, Game Boy Guru. One thing to mention is that um, Shoot the Corecast is not just a podcast, it's also kind of like a book club for shmups. So every month they play a new shmup together over at the RF Generation forums, and then they record the episodes and include community feedback. So it's a great gateway into the community and you should definitely check them out. All right, so the term old school shmups sounds like those games are not being made anymore, but that's not true. Game Boy Guru already name dropped our next guest, which I was lucky enough to chat with. And he's here to recommend a recently released old school shmup. I'm, I'm Shmup Junkie, um, or my channel is called Shmup Junkie anyway. Um, and my channel is mostly focused on shmups, shooting games, um, arcade style games. Um, it's just 
one of the genres I love to play, and I'm just sharing that with everyone else. Um, I would recommend a GG Alesta 3, um, Game Gear Alesta 3, which is a modern sequel um, by M2 of the old um, Alesta games by Compile. Um, so the reason I recommend it is for all of those people who don't really vibe for whatever reason with the more modern style of game and want something that plays just like those old games do, but with a modern take. In other words, it has, it's like a perfect mix of the older games and new. It has all the conveniences and features of a modern game, um, you know, that M2 included. But when you're playing it, it literally feels like you were playing it back in, you know, 1992. Um, because of how they put it together and what the music sounds like and what the gameplay is like. You know, so what makes GG Alesta 3 unique it was it was actually developed by X Compile and Rising Staff. Um, the people who made, you know, the original Blazing Lasers and GG Alesta 1 and 2 um, and the programmer from Super Star Soldier. Um, you know, so when you play it, you can tell. You can tell it was programmed by veterans and people who used to make those games and they know how to do it. Um, so it feels right. That's the best way to explain it. It feels exactly like playing GG Alesta 2, only better. The difficulty with the old games is that they're not easy to get into for new players. You know, old school shooters were not accessible to a lot of people. You know, as kids, we were used to it, but now, you know, younger people are not. You know, the checkpoint system, you know, powering down at death, having to start over slow and underpowered. Um, it just feels overly difficult and oppressive to a lot of people, and it turns a lot of people off um, to the genre. And that's not good or bad, it's just what we were used to, and things have changed. Picking up GGLS to 3, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get that old school game if you want to play it that way, but you have all the modern features. You know, you have the save states, you have rewinds, but also you have stage practice. So you can actually pick certain stages and bosses and just practice them. So anyway, I, I've said enough, I'll stop there, but that's probably why I recommend it. For me, it's the perfect combination of old school and the games I used to love playing. But now, it just came out two years ago, and it's absolutely, it's literally one of my favorite games that's come out in the last few years. People watch my videos and they're like, oh, he's so good, he's this and that, but like, really no. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, I've been playing these games for so long. You know, I can pick them up and beat them quickly enough, but compared to like the really good players out there, I'm, I'm not even in their ballpark. So I kind of don't bother posting gameplays at 1CCs. That's the one game I did. Um, yeah, so I've made a couple. Um, the first one was a preview video um, before the game would release. So I just knew that it was coming as part of the collection. So that video focused more on the other Elasta games. Um, so I focused on those. I played them. I talked about them. And then I made the second video, which is the full review, which focuses first on GGLS to 3 and what I thought of it and all the different mechanics and weapons. Um, and then it goes into the rest of the collection and everything else. I'm Shmup Junkie. You can find me on YouTube. Just search for Shmup Junkie, Google Shmup Junkie, and it'll come right up. Thank you so much, Shmup Junkie. One thing I love about his channel is the obvious passion for the genre. It is infectious. And I completely second that recommendation. I have been talking about LS GG3 on this channel myself. It is fantastic. All right, so we talked about classic shmups, but the term is kind of hard to grasp without also looking into what came after the classic shmups. In the mid 90s, a new style of shmup emerged, one that quickly captured the imagination of shmup players and developers. The new style we're talking about is, of course, Bullet, Bullet Hell. Hell. Those shmups are also known as Damaku or Manic Shooters. A lot of shmup outsiders tend to call any kind of shmup Bullet Hell, and there's probably nothing we can do about it, but as game designers it's important we understand what Bullet Hell is and isn't. Bullet Hell is a refinement of the shmup formula. Yes, bullet hell shmups have a lot more bullets than classic shmups, but the bullets are also slower. And also the ship's hitbox is often tiny. So the challenge becomes less about quick reflexes, but rather precise navigation. Contrary to what the name implies, bullet hell isn't necessarily harder than a classic shmup. It's just a different type of challenge. And to fully experience what we mean by bullet hell, there's probably no game better than the game that started it all. Our next recommendation is Dodonpachi by Cave. The countdown begins. Three, two, one, go.
Cave is a Japanese arcade game studio that quickly became synonymous with bullet hell shmups. Their shmups to this day fill the upper ranks of the community's top 10 lists. And Nodonpachi is among them. Strictly speaking, Nodonpachi maybe wasn't even the first bullet hell, but it certainly helped to establish the style. And like Raiden before, it's simply a cool jet shooting at a bunch of spaceships and tanks. But this time it's cranked up to 11 and beyond. It's an assault on the senses. The pixel art is incredible. Everything is exploding all the time. Shiny pickups, giant colorful enemies. It's beautiful and mesmerizing. I keep dying, but I keep playing it because I just can't get enough of it. Dodonpachi is a masterclass of shmup design and you cannot talk about shmups without experiencing it at least once. Sadly, it can be difficult to play it if you aren't into emulation. There have been no recent ports of it. The distant sequel to Dodonpachi, Dodonpachi Resurrection, is currently on Steam and on various consoles. And it's great, but it doesn't have that incredible pixel art of the original. So maybe a different cave map will be better for you. And if we are going to talk about cave, there is no person I can think of who is more in tune with the studio than my next guest. Hello everyone, this is Mark of the Electric Underground and today I am recommending a beginner shmup that I think a lot of people can pick up and get into, which is the port of Mushihimi-sama for Nintendo Switch, as well as on Steam and on Xbox 360. The PS2 port isn't so great, but the other versions are excellent and one of my favorite shmups of all time is actually Mushihimi-sama. What's great is that it has a lot to offer for players who are newer to the genre. So it's got the original mode, which was specifically made by Cave to be sort of a Toplan style, nice and easy, not too bullet hell dense shmup mode. And then so you go from original to maniac mode, which is one of my favorite modes. And that's sort of your standard bullet hell difficulty. And then from there, there's ultra mode that is not definitely beginner friendly. And I'm pretty sure when you fire up ultra mode, the game even warns you, beware, this will destroy you. But even outside of ultra mode, there's also the awesome arranges that are included in uh, these ports. They're very well done. Arrange mode is one of my favorites, actually, because it allows you to switch your shot type on the fly. And it also gives you this tiny little hitbox and it also gives you an auto bomb feature and that's very new player friendly as well. So I've always felt that actually the range mode of Mushi Musama outside of the extra TLB at the end is also a great way to get into the genre. And then finally, in terms of availability and accuracy, this port is hard to beat. It is available on Switch, Steam and Xbox 360. All three versions are very accurate as far as faithfulness to the game's internal slowdown and also low input lag. So they're all basically three frames. I think the Steam version might be able to squeak out in two and a half frames if you on a really optimized setup. But three frames for the Nintendo Switch version is incredibly impressive and one of the lowest lag ratings you'll find on the Nintendo Switch period across any game so i cannot recommend it enough livewire did a great job and it is an all-time classic and something i think every shmup fan can appreciate one way or another adios thank you so much mark i did not expect mark picking mushi himesama but i'm glad he did a fairy riding a beetle shooting at bucks is absolutely my jam and be sure to check out mark's channel electric underground for sharp shmup commentary and sometimes hot takes that are just a little bit too spicy. <laughs> so, Cave is one name firmly associated with bullet hell. The other one is Toho. Now, Toho shmups are technically in the games, they are all creations of just one person, this guy. But Zune has been added since like 1997, so there's like over 20 titles in the series by now. It has amassed a gigantic cult following that grew way beyond just the shmups. To put it in modern terms, this is an indie shmup series with its own cinematic universe. 
The shmups all center around cute enemy girls in frilly dresses shooting magical spells at each other. Something I found fascinating is how economic the games are. Remember, the games have been made by a single person, so they don't have like the giant sprites or intricate leather backgrounds like the shmups created by a big studio. But they do impress with elaborate hypnotic bullet patterns, refined gameplay mechanics and catchy tunes. I think Toho games are also a good example that bullet hells don't have to be hard. Toho games usually have pretty gradual difficulty level adjustments, so no matter how experienced you are, you can play the game at a comfortable level setting for you. It's not like the uh, walk in a park, but in contrast to Don Pachi's bombast, they tend to feel like pleasantly meditative. It's all about focused precision and not the relentless adrenaline mayhem. Because of their underground roots, it can be tricky to get hold of the games. It's not hard, but you might need to dig through some strange websites. Some of the titles recently started to appear on Steam, which may be more convenient. But they do not include the two titles I here recommend it most often. Perfect Cherry Blossom and Imperishable Night. So if you want to stick to Steam, the game I would recommend to you is actually this one here. Fantastic Danmaku Festival Part 2. It's not an original Toho game by Zune, rather it's a fan game made by a Chinese team. But it actually looks nicer than a real Toho and it's a remake of Perfect Cherry Blossom right here on Steam. Just go for it. And speaking of indie games that have risen to bullet hell juggernauts, here's a modern bullet hell indie game that has quickly become the king of the genre. And here's my next guest eager to dive in. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Dace and I run Shmuptopia on YouTube, a dedicated shmup channel revolving around mindset, approach, and understanding shmups on a deeper level. In my videos, we delve into shmup psychology, address misconceptions, explore creative ways to overcome our limitations, and provide less experienced players with useful information and commentated novice mode guides, since that's where many will start. Today I'd like to share a little about Crimson Clover World Explosion, one of my all-time favorite shmups and one I consider an absolute masterpiece. There's a lot to this game, but I'll only highlight a couple of points that stand out to me. Crimson Clover's mechanics make for an incredibly engaging experience. You have bombs, a double gauge hyper mode, point blanking, and a lock-on system. One thing I love about Crimson Clover is that your hyper mode gauge doubles as your bomb meter. If your meter is full and you activate it, you'll enter your hyper mode, known as break mode. If the second gauge level is full, you can access a more powerful double break mode. If your meter isn't yet full and you activate it, you'll fire off a devastating bomb. However, this is where things get interesting. Every time you use a bomb, a line on your meter will move along the gauge, indicating how much further you'll need to charge your gauge before being able to use the next bomb. It's an incredible way to introduce resource management while gradually applying more and more pressure. To me it's important to zero in on games you can grow into, not out of, and Crimson Clover perfectly represents this idea. No matter your skill level, you can jump into Crimson and be fully engaged. If you're new to shmups, you'll be very challenged, but will find your progress rewarding. If, on the other hand, you're very experienced with shmups and significantly increased difficulty, you'll still need to give it your all, as the harder modes are some of the most demanding I've ever encountered. Additionally, you can save your replays, and Crimson has a well-structured and elaborate training mode, which is essential for anyone tackling this game seriously. If you're interested in hearing more about this particular shooter or how I approach it, feel free to check out my Arcade Original 1cc guide video or my Novice Mode guide. If you're leaning more toward shmup psychology and mindset, jump into my Merging with the Machine series and the Shmup Survival Guide 101 series, through which I've begun covering shmup fundamentals in more depth. Anyway, that's it for now. Feel free to swing by the channel, say hi, whatever you want. Have a stellar one, and we'll be seeing you around. Thank you so much, Dace. As you can see, Crimson Clover is smart and sophisticated. It does what Cave started and perfected it. Don't miss out on it, and be sure to tune into Schmaptopia for some fantastic newcomer-friendly guides and commentary. So, classic shmups and bullet hell. The two genders. We got Western and country. Categories can be useful for us to make sense of a complex subject, but categories are only useful until, until they aren't. Inevitably, you will come across a shmup that falls somewhere in between. And our next guest is here to talk about just such a shmup. 
Hey everyone, this is Octane. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Octane or you know on YouTube um, under Octane. And uh, I run a little channel, we do some events, we do various things on my channel. You can find um, quick start guides, which I encourage you to, to have a look at. What I try to do is break down a game in just a few minutes so you can just get in and get started. Um, we do Kumite events, which are super interesting, where we get players together to play a new game they've never played before and see how they tackle it. And um, lastly, there's a, a set of almost like podcasts, like video casts called the Shmup Cast, uh, as well as other talks that we do, in which we talk about a beginner's list that we put together to get people into the genre. So those are some resources that are on my channel. I encourage you to visit and have a look at it. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about the shmup of my choice that I want you to take a look at, which is Chorensha 68K. Um, Chorensha is a freeware game that was made um, in 1995. And it was made for the Sharp uh, 68000 uh, computer. Don't worry, it's been ported to Windows. It runs a little bit faster, it runs at 60 frames per second, but there is a Windows port out there. It's completely free, so you can go and check it out today. Um, why do I think this game is interesting? Well, there's Don Maku types of shmups, which are, you know, bullet hell, where you are weaving your ship through, um, through slower bullets, slower, denser bullet patterns. You're really thinking about, you know, what what you're gonna do next. And then there's, you know, kind of older classic shmups, which where the bullets are super fast, your hitbox is super big, and you wanna really stay away from dangers or go around dangers as much as possible. You wanna memorize a level versus like react to this dense bullet pattern. And what Choren Shah does is it, it it splits a difference right in the middle. There's fast bullets, there's slow bullets, the patterns are somewhat reactable, but they're but you know they're they're there. You'll see my quick start guide to talk about different approaches to how to conquer shmups and, and it has all of those in the game. It'll it'll teach you about aimed bullets, you'll see static bullets, all of that stuff. Even just the first level, first couple levels, you'll get your shmup fundamentals um sorted. So it's a very fundamentally sound shmup. There's only one ship and there's only kind of like a very basic background, so there's no ground enemies, and that allows a developer to really tailor the experience heavily. Everything in this game is intentional, from the music, uh, which is synced up to the action on the screen, to the sound effects, which are layered in such a way that the right sounds come through because 68K had a limitation on how many sounds could be played, um, to the design of, of the shot, the, the actual weapon that you use on the ship, your basic shot, the spread of it is designed in a particular way. The sprite sizes are designed in a particular way to encourage you to get closer to enemies so that all of your spread shots hit, which is a technique known as point blanking. In previous games, it was sort of like, you didn't really know, oh, there's a shot limit, but in this game, it's very intuitive. So the, the game sort of, you get in and you get in fast. Um, it has a square screen, which is also quite interesting. It's a vertical game, but it has a square screen, which is something, again, like, you, you typically had a 4-3 screen turned during that time. So I think this is a little bit of an innovation. It's a square. It doesn't feel like a square when you're playing. It feels long because you're scrolling upwards, but it is it is a square. Um, so I think the, the, the game itself is is just the, the, it's the quintessential shmup. I mean, it, it has all of the fundamentals of what makes a shmup good in one free package. And, um, you know, the last thing I would say for you shmup devs is just encourage you to explore what makes what makes people drawn to shmups and what makes people want to play them. Because I think there's components there that will help you from a design perspective make a game that's not only fun for you to play, but fun for everyone else to play and has that replay value, even though it's a really short game that you want to come back to it and play it over and over again, right? Um, you know, why does, you know, why do certain games hold your attention for longer than that first playthrough. So just something for you to think about. As you're exploring my channel, other channels, and other shmups, you know, my encouraging, you know, my encouragement to you is to look at as many games as possible and really think about what kind of people or what kind or, or, or what archetypal players play different kinds of games. Um, that's it for me. Uh, have fun on my channel, have fun on Christian's channel, and uh, hope you make some cool shmups in your future. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much, Actane. As you might have already noticed, Actane actually started developing his own shmups during the basic shmup showcase. It's been such a blast seeing him share his passion and knowledge for the subject, so be sure to catch him on one of his live streams. While Cho and Shah mixes influences of both shmup styles, some other shmups just seem not to map on any of those styles at all. And one of those is the famous and highly controversial Ikaruga. Ikaruga has some qualities of bullet hell shmups, having a small hitbox and no upgradable weapons, 
but talking about Ikaruga that way seems like it's missing the point. The prominent feature here is the polarity mechanic. In short, bullet and enemies come in two colors, black and white. The player's ship can also change colors with the press of a button. And if your ship is white, it's immune to white bullets, and if it's black, it's immune to black bullets. Additionally, you will also do more damage to enemies of opposite color. And those simple rules explode into a whole universe of dizzying decision making. It's that polarity mechanic that drives the entire game and it makes Ikaruga stand out as a shmup of its own class. Now, because it's such an oddball and also so popular, Ikaruga is a bit controversial in the shmup community. But you absolutely should try Ikaruga. Years of word of mouth earned Ikaruga the mainstream popularity it enjoys today. It's a radical, difficult, visionary game with an ingenious mechanic and stunning dark art direction. Listen, I'll end this recommendation on a blazing hot take. It was our Dark Souls before there was Dark Souls. Moving on, our next guest is here to talk about another oddball shmup that just came out. Hello, I'm a skeleton. I have a little show called The Bone Zone where I talk about all kinds of games, including an annual video on Steam Shmups every October. This fine gentleman asked if I'd like to contribute to one of his tutorial videos, to which I said, do 95% of Americans pronounce Darius incorrectly? If you're looking for a quality shmup, then Soul Cresta, the surprising new release from Platinum Games, is for you. What makes this such an exceptional experience is the sheer amount of variety in the gameplay. You're constantly switching up the order of your three ships to change up your attacks, and use powerful formation specials. You can even take advantage of the slowdown when switching to get your bearings, or pump up your special meter at these F nodes. Add to that fighting game style special attacks that use directional inputs, and you have a shmup with an incredible amount of player engagement. The skill ceiling here is sky high and goes way beyond just memorizing enemy patterns. I had a lot more to say about Soul Cresta, so if you're interested, you can find the full video on my channel, A Skeleton. Hope to see you there, and a big thank you to Lazy Devs for giving me the chance to talk to you. This is A Skeleton signing out. Thank you so much, Skelly. I just love that skeleton. And yeah, a shmup with a sprinkling of fighting game controls from Platinum Games Wild. Anyway, Skelly was our last guest, so let us wrap up this video with a lightning round of small indie shmups. We kind of already had indie shmups with Crimson Clover and Toho, but I wanted to expand this into its own category because these types of games are especially important to me. These shmups are works of passion made by small teams. They often rely on word of mouth coverage like this one. They often also dare to do radical things. And the devs are more approachable. You can ask them for advice on social media or sometimes hang out with them in the Shmup Discord channels. They can be a valuable resource to learn from, so in no particular order. Zero Ranger, the big one. Beautiful crisp pixel art with a shockingly limited color palette. A stylish setting with anime vibes and surprising narrative meta twists. Classic Shmup gameplay, but also a ton of new ideas like unlockable continues and a roguelike style upgrade system. Zero Ranger is the quintessential indie shmup that set new standards and that people are still talking about today. It's an absolute must. Blue Revolver. What happens when an incredibly talented indie dev and expert shmup player goes on a quest to recreate that cave bullet hell style? And then they add quality of life features like a mission mode to train your skills? And then they also add cute enemy waifus. Well, that's Blue Revolver, baby! I especially love the efficient art direction on this one. This is another Stone Cold Indie Shmup classic. Jamestown Plus. Some time ago, a group of spunky indie devs decided they will bring shmups back big time. They made Jamestown, beautiful, colorful pixel art, a unique steampunk setting and heavy focus on co-op multiplayer. I remember talking to the devs at GDC before the game's release and maybe to some extent that's why I'm here doing this project. Because this was 10 years ago and I want to continue what Jamestown started. There is tons of underappreciated ideas here. One of my favorites is this overview map 
where you can work your way through the game level by level like in Super Mario World instead of the arcade thing. I want to see more ideas like that. Jamestown may not have brought shmups back, but not for a lack of trying. A true trailblazer. Shieldmate MX. Let's end with something more recent. Here's the new kid. Released earlier this year, Shieldmate came out of nowhere and made quite a splash. It centers around a unique game mechanic where you sometimes want to get hit by a bullet to power up your ship. It's crazy. It also features some alternate game modes that help onboarding beginners. It's a fantastic debut and a team worth keeping eye on. And hey, one of the devs even made a P8 demake for the basic shmup showcase. Alter Haudegen, how cool is that? So that's it for today. This should give you plenty of ideas where to start with your own research. But of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you have some shmup recommendations yourself, absolutely do post them in the comments. Also, I would like to thank all of our guests today. It's been a pleasure being able to get everybody together. Be sure to check out their content and get in touch with the Shmup community. Links to all of our guests and games will be in a doobly-doo. And again, feel free to suggest other Shmup people worth checking out. A final shout out to the YouTube channels Shmups on Switch and Studio Mud Prints. They could not make it for this video, but they have been a tremendous resource in my own research and I will add them to the list of recommended channels as well. Yes, 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 we will continue with some more phase 2 prep work soon. Until then, play the games and see you next time around guys, bye bye!